Corvex versus Wamu. Not gonna lie, I wanted to do something like this a month ago, but my game didn't work. Of course it didn't. But, we're back. We're here to do more Warframe stuff, and as a result, JoJo stuff. So, who would win in a fight between Albrecht and Trotty's Chosen Protector of the Operator and the Chosen Protector of Cars and ECDC? Here are the rules. Rule 1. They are physically equal in all terms of physical stats, and they are equal in all terms of hacks. This is because we don't want one random character just suddenly spinning the block on the entirety of JoJo. Which, if you don't believe me, I will gladly take a conversation with anyone on Wonderview vs. Andy Warframe. It's, it's bad. Rule 2. The fight takes place on Earth in some random undescribed country with people, and it is infinitely nighttime, so there's no arbitrary timer put on Wamu. Rule 3. Corvix is not allowed to use guns, because that would be boring. Let's begin with Wamu. Keep in mind the majority of the material I'm using comes from the anime, as a small amount of JoJo fans actually read the manga, and besides that, there's nine parts to the manga, so likely you've not read the entirety of JoJo even then, which, compared to people from the 80s who had to read manga, is a small amount of people. Getting to Wamu, why does he matter? First, he's a Pillarman. Pillarmen are super, super goofy with their anatomical structure, as you see on the screen. They can not only manipulate their body in strange ways, but they can also use their ability to absorb things, even behind them, pause, by using the ribcage to try to grab someone. They can also go inside you. I beg your pardon? Wamu does it as well when he fights Joseph. He's also part unicorn with unicorn magic. He has a technique named the Divine Sandstorm, where one hand turns counterclockwise and the other hand turns clockwise, and you get turned into dust. We only see this one time in the series, but if you go into Wamu's shadow, he will instinctively attack you, and with deadly accuracy. He also plot armors plot armor. What? Remember the unicorn thing I said earlier? Well, Wamu can use the wind to see better than he can with eyesight. Pillarmen have better immortality than vampires and use them as food. Like, share, and subscribe, or my cat will eat your toes. Our next contestant, Corvix. What does he have? His first ability, the Kyrinka Pillars. The Kyrinka Pillars inflict radiation upon you, like the rest of his abilities, and they slow you by 35%. Next ability, Containment Wall. This is a crowd-clearing ability where you are slammed into the middle of two walls that are summoned, one to the left and one to the right. Upon getting slammed by the walls, you are more vulnerable to damage, and your durability is completely negated and taken away. It also inflicts radiation, again, like his first ability. Third ability, Dysymmetric Guard. Dysymmetric Guard protects Corvix from any and all debuffs, be it physical or elemental. Basically, Wamu cannot slash or puncture the flesh, if you can even call it flesh, of Corvix. Fourth ability, the Crucible Blast. Used to, I call it the Unibeam, but upon reflection, it's more apt to compare it to the Atomic Breath from Godzilla. For Age, that is a very odd conversation to have. So, the main problem is there are two main characters, the reason being because of Eternalism, which is both possibilities happen within the same timeline. It's not two timelines, it's two possibilities, which used to be two timelines, now are two possibilities within the same timeline because of Man in the Wall. Drifter, because he wasn't put in a pod, is over thousands of years old, and the Operator, when they were finally put into a cryopod, is hundreds to possibly a thousand years old in age. Mind you, they become immortal after they get void powers. The reason I bring this up is because Drifter and Operator are about the same in terms of combat, so the age thing actually means very little. But the important part is, there are close to 60 different Warframes, so that is close to 60 different fighting styles the Operator and the Drifter had to learn to use when using those Warframes. Elements of those fighting styles will naturally carry into the other Warframe they use. So for Corvix here, 
Corvix has a fighting style of his own that the main characters had to adapt to using when they use Corvix. However, they're not actually going to carry other behaviors from other Warframes into Corvix. So Corvix technically has more than one fighting style, but it's kind of fallacious to say that he actually can fight like 57 other Warframes or something like that. So who wins? Let's start with advantages and disadvantages. For Wamu, his main advantages are age and experience, because that trumps the drifter's fighting styles and combat experience, what with him being over 10,000 years old, and developing his fighting style within those 10,000 years he's been around. His next advantage is his physiology, which allows him to hide within people or objects and allows him to surprise attack, as well as quickly dodge attacks that are otherwise undodgeable to the average person. His third advantage is his wind attacks, particularly the Divine Sandstorm and the Final Storm, assuming I got the name right. The Divine Sandstorm is very useful at a long range, and the Final Storm, which at the cost of eventually killing the user, will allow Wamu to channel wind into his horn and fire it out in a concentrated blast, although the charge up time takes a while, so it's 50-50 on the Final Storm. His last advantage is ease of use. Wamu doesn't have as much of a stamina cost compared to Corvix with his abilities, meaning Wamu can use his abilities more freely and use his abilities to chain in other strategies he can create on the fly. For Corvix, his main advantages are the radiation, which can destroy electrons by the way, allowing radiation to function somewhat similar to Hamon, assuming Wamu were to take enough of it in. The Kyrinka Pillars, which slow Wamu down by a whole one-third plus two percent and inflicts radiation upon Wamu. The next advantage is the Containment Wall, but the caveat. In small enclosed spaces, it will guarantee to hit Wamu. There's no way for Wamu to escape if there's nowhere to escape to. In open environments, like on a street or on a plane, all Wamu has to do is stay out of the way and not be hit by the containment wall, but if he's hit by a Kyrinka pillar, a containment wall will hit him no matter what, even if it does partial damage. However, were the containment wall to land on Wamu, it will take away his defenses and leave him unable to protect himself, leaving him open to Corvix to just throw down relentlessly. The next set of advantages for Corvix are twofold. The Dysymmetric Guard protects his flesh from being punctured or slashed, allowing an entry into his body, and at the same time, Wamu can't even go inside Corvix's body. Were he to go inside Corvix's body, the radiation that powers the Warframe, which is burned through Wamu, ignores regeneration and his immortality and kill him outright. So basically, Corvix is immune to being Wamu's puppet, and at the same time, Wamu's forced to fight on the outside and just batter Corvix as a result. And finally, the most important advantage, and likely the win con for this fight, is the Crucible Blast. The Crucible Blast has more range than the Final Storm and the Divine Sandstorm. It's more potent, able to destroy electrons, being able to allow it to tear through Wamu's wind attacks. And the cast time is far faster than Divine Sandstorm, and definitely far faster than the Final Storm, which has a long cast time. The only cost to the Crucible Blast is that it takes a lot of energy to use. Because it has a lot of energy that it spends when firing the blast, Corvix isn't really allowed to spam it willy-nilly and is forced to use about 5 or 6 of them before he's forced to recharge his energy from zero. In my honest opinion, I think Corvix wins and here's why. The radiation poisoning will kill Wamu over time or just straight up destroy his body, while the Crucible Blast is an easy go-to if Wamu is already weakened or slowed down by one of his other abilities. So all Corvix needs is an opportunity and time to put together a strategy to lock Wamu in the same spot for a longer period of time for his Crucible Blast to activate or a containment wall to lock him in place before he goes for the Crucible Blast. And all at the same time, Wamu is being violently flooded with radiation from almost all of Corvix's abilities. Not only that, 
Wamu lacks an actual win con other than hope to beat Warframe to death when Warframe has regen negating that. Overall, it's a fun fight, but because Warframes are inherently more hacksy than Pillarmen, it just ends up being the case that Warframes would just slap around the Pillarmen almost any day of the week. Now, if we were to discuss a hypothetical ultimate life form Wamu versus a full power Corvix, it is way more extreme because we're giving Corvix his entire fifth dimensional scaling, his immortality along with his revival, his immeasurable speed scaling and all that jank, there's just no debate. If we were to hypothetically give Wamu the Stone of Aja, he's not getting the continental or multi-continental, let alone planetary. If he can't even get to 4D, meanwhile Corvex can get to 5D, how would that even be a competition? It's just a no-brainer all around. Anyhow, that's all I have to say about the fight. If y'all would like to offer your own opinion in the comments, go right ahead because I'm open to seeing the opinions of other people. But that's it for today because I am your host, nothing important here, and I will see you later, my fellow pillar men and Warframes. Buh bye bye